So uh, this video is designed to show a couple of quick ways to get ViewFind up and running for evaluation and development. Um, but before I get into that, I just wanted to highlight the fact that on the ViewFind website at viewfind.org, uh, if you go to documentation and scroll down to installation, uh, you will find detailed guides for installing ViewFind on a variety of platforms uh, and some more specialized topics. So if there's anything that you don't follow in this video, uh, be sure to take a look at the documentation and hopefully that will clear things up. And if the documentation is unclear, uh, you can also always go to the support section of the website and reach out on Slack or one of our mailing lists, and we will be happy to help you. So the first uh, method of installation that I'm going to demonstrate is installing from a Debian package, which is probably the easiest way to get a running instance of ViewFind uh, in sort of a realistic environment. Um, <clears throat> so what I have done as preparation for this demonstration is I have installed Ubuntu 19 on a uh, virtual machine. So I just have a blank Ubuntu installation uh, and I've installed all of the latest patches. So when I log in, I have just opened a terminal window. And if you were to look at the documentation on the website, you would see that the first step is to wget the viewfind Debian package from GitHub. I have already done that so that you don't have to watch my progress bar. So once you have downloaded the Debian package, uh, installing it is simply a matter of saying uh, sudo dpkg minus i and the file name, which will start the installation process. Takes a moment to unpack and you will see that when it is done, it's going to display a whole bunch of scary looking error messages, which we actually expect to see. So do not be put off by that. Uh, the error messages are going to show up because this package has some dependencies that haven't been installed yet. Uh, and it will just take an additional step to resolve those dependencies. So now we can play the elevator music and in post we can edit out this long stretch of nothing happening. Go on virtual machine, you can do it. Ah, there we go. There is our screen full of error messages. So now in order to install all of these dependencies, we just need to say sudo apt-get install minus f, and that will cause all of the missing things to get installed. <clears throat> and then we confirm that yes, we do want to install all of this stuff. And now again, we need to just watch some installation occurring. So we are in the very final stages of installation. Apache has been restarted. Uh, a few last minute things are occurring and ViewFind has automatically set up its own default configuration. So now we are back at the command prompt and ViewFind is now installed and running, but there are still just a couple of things that we need to do. Um, one thing that the installation process has done is it has set up a couple of helpful environment variables for us in the profile file, um, but that will not have automatically loaded yet. So we could either uh, leave the terminal and start a new one, or we can say source slash et cetera slash profile to reload the profile. And now I have uh, an environment variable called viewfind home which just contains the location of the ViewFind software. So if I switch there, I can now run solar.sh start to start the solar index, which ViewFind uses for storing records, though at this point it will be completely empty. The other thing that we need to do at this point, uh, and this is specific to uh, Ubuntu 18 and newer, is we need to uh, do some setup of the MySQL database 
so that ViewFind's web-based installation process can work correctly. Um, in these newer versions of Ubuntu, uh, by default, MySQL is configured so that it only allows you uh, to access the root user um, based on uh, your login rather than using actual uh, MySQL credentials. Uh, so we need to reconfigure that. So we are going to go sudo mysql minus u root to log in as the root user. And then we are going to say update mysql.user set plugin equals mysql native password where user equals root. We're going to flush privileges to make all of those changes take effect and we are going to quit. We can now run the standard user bin MySQL secure installation script to set up MySQL the way we want it. For now, I am not going to install the validate password plugin. I'm going to set a root password that I will remember. I'm going to clean up the anonymous users. Uh, we don't need to log in as root from off the box. So I'm gonna disable remote root login. I'm gonna clean up test data and reload privilege tables. So I now have a nice simple MySQL setup that will allow ViewFind to set up the database for me. If I had not wanted to do this and wanted to keep those default settings, there are ways around that, which I will briefly mention, uh, but this just makes this demonstration uh, a little easier. And the documentation that I pointed out at the beginning of this video contains all the details on how to do this for different combinations of Ubuntu and MySQL or MariaDB, uh, since each one has its own quirks. Uh, this is probably the hardest part of the installation process in this environment. But anyway, uh, now that all of this stuff is done at the command line, I can open up my web browser and I should be able to finish the ViewFind installation uh, using the web-based installation process by just going to localhost slash viewfind slash install. And this gives me a status display on the various aspects of viewfind. So we can just click these fix buttons one by one to sort everything out. So by default, viewfind has no configuration file set up. When we click fix here, it automatically creates an initial configuration. We can then navigate back to auto configure and this is back to an okay status. Now we can go to fix the database. This is how we create our initial viewfind database. I'm gonna make up a password for a viewfind specific user so that after this initial uh, account is set up, we no longer use root credentials to connect uh, viewfind to MySQL. But in order to do this initial setup, I need to enter here the root password that I set up when I did the MySQL secure installation. And you'll notice that there is a skip button here. If I were to click this, instead of submitting the form, I would get a list of SQL commands that I could run manually, uh, which is one way that you can get ViewFind set up without granting uh, root credentials to uh, Apache. But I'm just gonna do this the simple way for now. And we can now see database is showing as okay. I'm also going to click the fix button next to security, which establishes some random keys in the uh, configuration file that will be used for hashing uh, for security purposes. And at this stage, I'm not going to bother fixing the ILS because for this demo, I don't have an integrated library system to connect to. Uh, but if you do have an ILS, this gives you the opportunity to choose which one you're using uh, and it will establish a configuration file that you can edit with additional details. But at this point, uh, I now have a working instance of ViewFind. It just doesn't have any records in it. And uh, we will talk about loading records into ViewFind in a future call. So that's the end of the demo for setting up ViewFind uh, using a Debian package. Um, but another scenario that is often uh, useful to be able to deal with is being a developer uh, working with the code and wanting to very quickly get a test instance of ViewFind up um, to do some experiments with 
without risking doing damage to your local box. And in that situation, uh, a really useful tool is Vagrant, uh, which is a way of automating the creation and management of virtual machines. Uh, Viewfind ships with a default Vagrant configuration that will get you a test server in just a couple of commands. So I'm going to demonstrate how that works as well. I'm just going to connect to my test server using SSH and I will make my font bigger so that you can see it. All right, so I'm going to do this absolutely from the ground up. So I'm going to go to my temp directory and I am just going to git clone uh, github.com slash viewfind dash org slash viewfind. I'm going to clone a brand new fresh copy of viewfind uh, just to show you that you don't need any extra things except the viewfind code itself. Um, you just need to have git installed so you can clone the code and you need to have Vagrant installed so that you can run Vagrant. Um, installing Vagrant is beyond the scope of this video, um, but it's generally just a, man a matter of installing a package from your package manager and possibly going into your computer's BIOS and enabling some virtualization settings. Um, but if you do the good old Google the error message trick, uh, you should be able to get Vagrant running fairly painlessly. So anyway, I've now just cloned viewfind into a new viewfind directory. So I'm going to CD into that. And all I need to do to get everything running is say vagrant up, which is going to read the vagrant file that ships with viewfind um, and download a bunch of things. So the way vagrant works is there are existing machine images uh, that you can access. And so you can specify a base image and then layer some commands on top of it. So uh, for viewfind, we're currently using the Ubuntu Bionic 64 base image. Uh, and then we have some scripting that will do the whole viewfind installation on top of that. So right now, Vagrant is just booting up uh, its clone of the Bionic 64 image, which will take a few moments. We're probably going to need to fast forward some of this part of the video as well. Um, and once the machine is all booted up, it will run updates to get all of the latest packages, and then it will run more or less the same installation process that the Debian package had. So now we've reached the point where um, we're running the update scripts. All right, so we've now moved on to the point where we are installing Viewfind's dependencies. The updates are all installed. Now we are running Composer install to get all of the uh, PHP dependencies that did not download with the uh, Git repository automatically. Now we're downloading and installing Solar. And we're done. So with just two command lines, one to clone the repository, one to start Vagrant, uh, and then quite a bit of patience, uh, we now have a, an instance of Viewfind running inside a virtual machine on our server. And what Vagrant does that's really useful is it does both port and directory mapping. So our current directory slash temp slash Viewfind is actually mapped inside the virtual machine as the slash vagrant directory. Uh, and the virtual machine's uh, web ports are mapped to different port numbers on the local machine so that we can see them. Uh, I'll demonstrate this first um, by using the vagrant ssh command, which is how you get into the virtual machine. This will actually put me at a command prompt inside the VM. So I'm now in the virtual machine. And if I go to viewfind home, which you will recall is the environment variable that takes you to the directory containing the viewfind installation, it puts me in slash vagrant. And if I do an LS, I will see that this is actually the same thing that on the host machine is 
slash temp slash viewfind. While I'm here, I'm going to run solar.sh start to start up the solar index because that does not start by default. Uh, and viewfind is going to expect to see that. And now what I'm going to do while that begins is bring up a web browser because as I mentioned, there was some port mapping taking place. And in this instance, we've um, mapped the HTTP port on the virtual machine to port 4567 on the uh, host machine. So if I just go to viewfind test, which is the name of my test server, colon 4567, slash viewfind slash install, then I should get the same installation dialog box that I got when I installed from the Debian package. Uh, and so this is me on my laptop accessing a virtual machine running on my test server that's being port proxied uh, through the test server. So as before, I can fix the basic configuration, go back to the auto configure screen, I can set up the database. Uh, and in the Vagrant configuration, the database root password is just automatically set for you to root, uh, which is obviously not secure. But this is a disposable test environment, so we don't particularly care about its security. Uh, usually, you would set this up to test something for a few minutes and then destroy it again. And it's all sandboxed inside a VM anyway. I'll do my security fix. And now, just as with the other installation method, I have a fully functional running instance of viewfind. It just doesn't have any records yet. So as I mentioned, this is all documented in the viewfind wiki. There's a page under installation for Vagrant that tells you about these port mappings and reminds you about what the root password is, and also summarizes uh, some other useful Vagrant commands, which I will go over really quickly. So I'm going to exit out of my Vagrant uh, VM. I'm now back on the host machine prompt. So I can say uh, Vagrant suspend. And what this will do is it will save the state of my virtual machine and stop it from running, but it will create an image of the exact place it was when it was running so that the next time I type vagrant up, it will resume from exactly the point uh, where I was and it's not going to have to rebuild and reinstall everything. So this is useful if you're doing some work on the VM uh, and then you need to stop and you don't want to be using up all of the memory and resources that virtualization takes on your server. Um, you can turn it off, but get back to where you were left. You can also say Vagrant Halt, which is a little bit stronger than Vagrant Suspend. This is actually going to send a shutdown signal to the VM, um, which will cause it to power down. And then the next time you say Vagrant Up, it'll take a little bit longer because it's actually going to boot the whole box. Uh, and if you have had uh, processes running that don't automatically start, you would have to Vagrant SSH back in again and start them up. I'm not going to demonstrate that now for the sake of time. Uh, and when you're completely done, if you want to free up all of the resources, you can say Vagrant Destroy. And it will ask for confirmation. And when you confirm that, it will delete all of the stuff related to the VM, free up all of your resources. And if you say Vagrant up again, you'll have to go through the whole installation process again. So as I say, Vagrant is useful um, for getting a test instance up and running in a minimum of steps. Uh, it's useful for creating a disposable test where you can try things and not worry about hurting anything. Uh, it's also useful if you want to uh, roll back and see how Viewfind was at past points in time. Uh, we've had this Vagrant configuration since uh, Viewfind 4.1. So if you check out older version tags and do Vagrant up, you'll get running instances of Viewfind representing different points in time, uh, which can be useful, for example, if you're trying to track down where a bug was created. So that's uh, all I had for today. I hope at least some of this was interesting, and I hope it will be more interesting when we do the video editing. Um,
did anyone have anything they wanted to add to this? Um, suggestions for next time, questions, et cetera?